بینرالی بر رزب که تو همو کتکتان شاد و کامران خوشحالی که جاره چی دیگه لا دیداره که لا حفیفینه چی زور تایبت با دیداری ایوی خوشویست شاد دبینه و دیداری ام جارمان لگل زور بر رز فوتوشی ماتسو موتو بالویزی جاپون لا عراق مستر امباسادور تنکی ویری ویری ماش فور دیس انترویو ویو 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 to have interview with a person who represent one of the greatest country in the world. So, thank you very much and welcome to Kurdistan. I'm so happy to see you, thank but you. you're you know, very experienced you know, uh, presenter like you, and thank you, you look so young, like 25 years old today. No, nearly 27. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, am I pronounced your name correctly? Very correct. Okay. I just make fun of my name always, you know, like uh, Futoshi Fatush. Okay. Salada Yabaniye. <laughs> Japanese salad. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Ambassador, let me uh, start with a very common question. Um, how did you find Kurdistan in terms of security, stability uh, in Kurdistan, I mean? Well, actually, I'm following your whole situation of, you know, Kurdistan since years yes. because, you know, I'm one of, you know, a specialist in the Japanese foreign ministry for this region. Yes. You came a long way, really. Okay. And only what, uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, mm -hmm. you had a nothing and you know, oppressions and no freedom. Nothing. Then, you know, more than 30 years passed and now you have a uh, prosperity. Stability. Of course, you have a little problems, but uh, all the people here and the leadership, particularly, know the way how to solve the issues. And I'm very supportive. Mr. Ambassador, let me ask you this question. This question is very, very important for us, for the Kurdish people. During the Second World War, when they bombarded Hiroshima and Nagasaki by nuclear weapon, in 1988, uh, the Iraqi army bombarded Halabja city by chemical weapon. From that moment, we called Halabja Halabshima. So what do you say about this name? We took it from Hiroshima to say Halabshima. This is very interesting. Actually, I visited Halabja myself uh, a couple of months ago. And also, I visited a street called Hiroshima. Hiroshima Street in Halabja. I was really amazed, you know, uh, by sort of, you know, uh, uh, similarities, you know, the people in Halabcha, you know, uh, uh, think about, you know, uh, in conjunction with uh, uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And uh, I think we have to remember uh, our history and uh, your history uh, of, you know, such tragedies uh, so that we shouldn't repeat them again. This is a sort of historical lessons, you know, both our people, you know, should learn from our mutual experiences of, you know, tragedies. Uh, let me ask you about this question as well. I mean, people in Kurdistan uh, compare with the Western and Eastern countries. They know the Japan's quite well through your cars. If you look at the streets, it's nearly full of the Japanese cars. Uh, the question is, are you willing to tie a kind of cultural tie with the Kurdish people or with Kurdistan? Mm. I think uh, your way of you know, throwing in this question is very interesting to me. You said uh, Japanese cars, yes. then culture. Actually, those two points are being connected here because you know, uh, your people have a good image of you know, Japanese products, uh, which may be originated of you know, Japanese you know, uh, companies' presence here uh, in whole Iraq, maybe 50 years ago, 70, 70s and 80s. So uh, uh, anything Japanese companies you know, uh, uh, you know, bring about here, uh, maybe connect, connected with deep sort of, you know, memories of, you know, all the Iraqis, include, including, you know, Kurdish people. So, um, for instance, you know, uh, you have like a Toyota presence in Kurdistan, very strong, and uh, they're promoting, you know, at the same time, like a Japanese spirit uh, by providing like a training to their employees. 
as well as a sort of, you know, certain Japanese cultures. If you visit like a Toyota showroom, I visited, you know, actually last month, yes. but uh, you sense a sort of uh, uh, sense of, you know, Japanese spirit there, you know, in a very Japanese sort of setting, you know, there. Yes. So uh, I recommend you to visit, you know, uh, that showroom so you enjoy, you know, Japanese days, even without going to Japan. Okay. Japan has a project to build schools uh, in Iraq, whole Iraq. Are we willing to build schools as well in Kurdistan? Oh, actually, already Japanese NGO called Ivy, Ivy Y, uh, has been building more than uh, 30 schools around, you know, Erbil in particularly. Majority of them are for, you know, uh, those, you know, internally displaced, you know, uh, kids coming from like a nine hour after, you know, Daesh came to the region. So there are lots of, you know, people, you know, uh, left, you know, nine hour to Erbil. So Japanese NGO are taking care of, you know, those kids by building, you know, uh, lots of schools. And for the next year, uh, this NGO will build another school for Kurdish, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, kids as well. So uh, I'm letting, you know, those, you know, Japanese NGOs to do more, you know, in educations. And also uh, we are very much interested in introducing sort of a Japanese way of, you know, education, for instance. And uh, I just came here, you know, from Baghdad. Uh, after having received, you know, Japanese professors and experts uh, in introducing Japanese style of education. So there's a more potential in this regard. Right. Mr. Ambassador, you talked about education. Uh, my question is, are you going to give scholarships to the Kurdish student to study in Japan? Well, actually, every year we do have a Japanese governmental uh, scholarship given to uh, Iraqi students, including Kurdish. Uh, but uh, the number is very limited. Uh, currently, only four scholarships. So, but every year at least, you know, one student, you know, go to Japan to study, either master degrees or PhD, for instance. So in the past 10 years, I can count around maybe 50 Iraqi students went to Japan. Of course, th that's not enough. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would like to, you know, have more Kurdish students in particular to come to Japan. And uh, there are lots of sc scholarships being offered by each respective universities in Japan as well. So I would really encourage, you know, young uh, students of uh, Kurdistan to, you know, check on those, you know, uh, informations so, so that, you know, they can come to Japan more. And I myself, you know, visiting uh, universities here, for instance, and that the day after tomorrow, uh, I'm going to give a special lecture at uh, Kurdistan University, for instance. So uh, I try my best as well to introduce, you know, uh, uh, Japanese universities to uh, Kurdish students here. Right, Mr. Ambassador, uh, Japan invested money in too many other countries around the world. My question is, are you willing or are you, do you have this agenda to invest in Kurdistan in agriculture and in, in industry? Right, thank you very much for your question. This is a big topic, actually. Give me one more hour so I can explain all. But uh, briefly speaking, uh, we have been doing a lot, uh, even in Kurdistan too. Uh, for instance, you know, uh, this year we completed the construction of uh, uh, Lok hydroelectric you know, station, for instance. Yes. It's a big you know, power station. And now in consultation uh, with, you know, uh, Erbil and Baghdad about uh, financing, you know, uh, Erbil sewage. Yeah, it's a very, very big, you know, project as well. You have uh, water issues, in particular, you know, treatment of, you know, water in particular. So uh, we are interested in, you know, financing it. Yes. But uh, you need to get a budget in the, you know, in Baghdad. So that's a question. So I solicit your leadership to talk with Baghdad as well on this point. Maybe I do, you know, tomorrow. Uh, so what else? Like uh, water supply stations, we, we've done a lot. Erbil, you know, Slemania, even Halabcha as well, uh, supply wa water, you know, for instance. And uh, you mentioned uh, uh, agriculture. Currently, we are dispatching a uh, Japanese expert uh, to consult with your agriculture research center in Elbil. Uh, to find out uh, what kind of, you know, agriculture product would be uh, suitable for export. 
from Kurdistan to abroad, possibly. So this is technical cooperation, you know, for instance. So, uh, and also, uh, currently in Baghdad, we have Japanese experts on uh, usage, effective usage of water, irrigation expert. So they are now focus on the south of, you know, uh, Iraq. But uh, there are more potential to uh, introduce, you know, sort of Japanese way of, you know, uh, effective use of, you know, water to this region in Kurdistan as well. Right. Mr. Ambassador, His Excellency Mr. Masrur Barzani, uh, the Prime Minister, in the beginning of his cabinet, he announced something, his policy. He said that we have to rebuild our economy and we start from the structure of agriculture and also industry. And he started not to depend only on oil. So what do you think about this policy? This policy is great. And the major strategic objective, you know, uh, for Kurdistan as well as for Iraq uh, is basically how to transform the economy uh, from oil-dependent public sector economy into private sector-led economy. You need a lot of knowledge, you know, to transform, you know, uh, this, you know, uh, economic, you know, system to something new. Uh, so in order to realize that, I think it's important uh, to change mindset of, you know, people. Because, you know, everybody think, you know, uh, I mean, the job is offered by the government and uh, you don't pay anything for public services. But actually, the countries, you know, we live in Japan, you pay for public services, you earn your money by working hard, well, at least eight hours a day, right, for instance. So uh, in order to realize, you know, this sort of transformation, I think people have to change, you know, my, your mindset. You know, you have to work hard, you know, in a very disciplined way, for instance, to provide, you know, new values uh, to your work and to your economy. So this requires sort of a, a revolution in your mindset. That's how I perceive, you know. So I think uh, if you bring in, you know, more Japanese companies uh, into this, you know, uh, region, I think this will happen naturally. But also, you know, I think uh, the people uh, think seriously about uh, how things should be, you know, uh, uh, done, you know, in private sector economy. I think this requires sort of a mental sort of a revolution, awakening. Okay, Mr. Ambassador, you have to encourage Japanese people to come to, uh, to Kurdistan, whether for investing or just to see in Kurdistan. Uh, here, Kurdistan is secure, is stable uh, and safe as well. Good point. I'm doing it, actually. Thank but I need, you know, more help from your side, yes. Kurdish people. Why don't you come to Japan more to make a PRs vis-a-vis -vis Japanese people? Yes. Kurdistan is safe and stable, and uh, you have a lively economy, etc., etc. But nobody comes to Japan. Oh. Very few. This is very sad. I can issue you know, visas, no problem. So you, you can go to Japan. You can enjoy it. You can even invest in Japan, too. Yeah, so a it's a news. mutual process, right? Yes, this is so good news. So I often hear, you know, uh, you know, Iraqi people, Kurdish people, or businessmen or politicians, you know, telling me, yes. why don't you invest? You know, Japan invests in Iraq, Kurdistan. But at the same time, I'd like to urge you mm -hmm. to come to Japan. Right. While we are doing this interview, Mr. Ambassador, there is a huge conflict in the Middle East. So... <coughs> What do you think, or how do you encourage the both sides to stop this inflict and this bombarding and killing? More than 14,000 people being dead. Right. So, what are you willing to tell the both sides to stop this conflict? Well, on this question, uh, first of all, I should uh, you know, share my sentiment uh, more than anything. My heart aches, just like all other people. Yes. Well, I tell you why. Sorry. You know, my first diplomatic works yes. 
is related with Gaza in 1990s. So I started, you know, my professional works, um, you know, uh, 1992 in Cairo. More than half of my, you know, works at the time was related with Middle East peace process. Japan also uh, participated in, uh, you know, particularly multilateral Middle East peace process together with other, you know, uh, donors and uh, international, you know, uh, society. And so I myself was, you know, uh, there in Gaza, uh, particularly in the late, you know, 1990s, uh, to support uh, reconstruction of Gaza and West Bank uh, through, you know, providing Japanese, you know, assistance. So I have, uh, you know, pictures, me and the President Arafat of, uh, you know, Palestinian Authority, yes. together in the middle of Gaza. So there was hope. At that time, yes. 30 years ago, it's lost. It's got lost. Now, nobody would call it Middle East peace process. Nobody. Because it's dead. Why? Because of a number of reasons. And uh, both societies, you know, Palestinian society and the Israeli society, become so much, you know, uh, radicalized. And there's no sense of, you know, uh, how do I say, you know, reconciliation mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, come on aim to make a peace. Um, so it's very difficult to say in just one word what we should do. But uh, it's a time of, you know, emotions, very high on both sides in a whole, you know, international society. But uh, we should... Uh, you know, we tend to, you know, the sense of reasons in order to attain a peace. So both sides need to think what is the best, together with, you know, support of international society. Right. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, you talked about the peace in the Middle East. This piece is very important as well for the Kurdish people. As you know, it's more than 40 million people without a state, without self-determination. In your opinion, what's the best solution for Kurdish problem as well? Because we don't have just Palestinian and mm -hmm. Israeli problem. We have this Kurdish problem. So right. in your opinion, what's the best right. solution right. for the Kurdish case? Of course, you know, uh, two questions so different, you know. In case of, you know, Palestinian cases, you know, of course we support two-state solutions. But in case of, you know, uh, the case of, you know, uh, Kurdistan, of course, uh, federalism, federalism is, you know, only solutions. And I understand, you know, uh, uh, your region, you know, uh, uh, have a priority for stronger decentralizations uh, in whole Iraq. Uh, so this issue should be discussed and to be consulted uh, between you know Baghdad and Erbil in a very peaceful peaceful way, with uh, uh, patience, and also I should add you know uh, to this you know political process, uh, I think people's you know uh, exchange are quite important. Uh, I mean, for instance, if you take up the question of you know language itself. I understand now, you know, younger, you know, Kurdish people maybe do not speak good Arabic like your generation. Yes. And uh, maybe Arab people, majority of them, don't speak any Kurdish. And this is not too good, even for considering, you know, I mean, sound functioning federalism. Federalism needs deep understanding. Uh, between, you know, two regions or more, you know. This is a sort of multi-ethnic, you know, multi-religious, you know, uh, country. So uh, you need a lot of efforts to keep and sustain federalism from both sides, uh, not only at the political level, but also at the economic level, also at the cultural level, at the academic level. So you need a huge sort of... Uh, you know, uh, strong, proactive, you know, uh, mechanism to protect, you know, this uh, principle of, you know, federalism. But uh, I think it's not enough yet. Mm -hmm. 
So I'd really encourage, you know, more proactive, peaceful efforts uh, to keep and sustain, you know, this process uh, from both sides. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult. Right. Mr. Ambassador, in October, you told Kurdistan24 that you have built a school in Shingal for the Shingal people, but unfortunately in occupied by PKK. So, my question is, is it still under the occupation of PKK? And um, do you support the implementation of Singer or Shangal um, agreement between KRG and Iraqi government? Yes, uh, this agreement was signed by, you know, whole, you know, uh, parties. So uh, we are very supportive, you know, for the implementation of this agreement. But it has been taking time. Um, and uh, regarding the Japanese school, uh, Japanese NGO, same NGO, Ivy, yes. built more than one year ago, uh, still continue to be occupied by the elements. Yes. They call it Yabasha themselves and uh, part of PKK, you know, I presume. And so uh, uh, there has been the loss of, you know, uh, educational opportunities for Yazidi children of more than 1,000. Obviously, you know, Japanese government and Japanese NGOs are very serious about, you know, uh, uh, this project because we wanted to give, you know, this school to 1,000 students of Sinjal. But uh, this was not used, you know, for more than one year because of certain elements occupying this building. And uh, their numbers are very small. And why this kind of thing happens? Japanese, you know, taxpayers do not understand, of course, of you course. know, about the situation of Xinjiang. Of course. Of course. of course, I myself understand, you know, all those, you know, uh, problems and uh, compl complexities. But uh, I cannot allow this happen to be too long because I have a duty to explain to our, you know, Japanese taxpayers, yes. right? So if this school is not utilized, you know, good enough for the, you know, for the sake of 1,000, you know, uh, Yazidi students, I, I'll be blamed by Japanese people. H how do I, you know, let it happen for too long? That's why I've been soliciting, you know, Iraqi government and the KRG and everybody, you know, in Sinjal, why don't you solve, you know, this question? And I don't want to intervene all the, you know, difficult, you know, issues. And I'm just, you know, Japanese NGO, Japanese people, just, uh, you know, sincere, you know, uh, in their intention to provide education opportunities, you know, for 1,000 students. Why this doesn't, you know, happen? Very bizarre. How do you, this is a very important question, really, because I, again, I talk about your discipline in your life. Mm -hmm. How to bring Japanese culture mm -hmm to Kurdistan and take a Kurdish culture as well to Japan, or let us say to try to mix these two cultures together. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you have a tradition of Peshmerga. Yes. And I understand that, Kak Farhad, that you were Peshmerga, right? <laughs> fighting, you yes. know, one day. Yes. Maybe, but you stopped fighting long time ago already. <laughs> I'm too old for I that, see. yes. <laughs> well, we now, have, I'm, now I am a right. journalist. I see. Yes. We have a long tradition of, you know, samurai, you yes. know. We do still keep, you know, a uh, spirit of samurai somewhere, you know, in our heart. Somewhere. So perhaps, you know, sometime, you know, uh, we are reminded, you know, uh, by our, you know, ancestors. You know, they're whispering into our ears, perhaps. We have to behave sometime. And, uh, and also sometime, you know, uh, we say, like... Uh, you're like uh, grandparents. My grandmother is always looking at you. You know, passed away a long time ago, right? Yes. And uh, looking at you from behind and supporting you. The then spirit. You, the spirit. spirit. Okay, yes. So, uh, you know, you cannot do anything wrong in your life. Yeah. Mr. Ambassador, uh, this question about your uh, trade volume with Iraq. Uh, as far as you know, how much is it? Well, actually, 
I found the figure very disappointing yeah. to me. So uh, uh, export from Iraq to Japan, very small, around 300,000 dollars. While Japanese export to Iraq is still small, 600 million dollars. Very small, per year, last year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, we don't import oil from Iraq. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. Maybe you didn't know. No, we didn't Last know. year, zero. Of course, Japanese oil companies have a stakes, you know, in south of Iraq. You know, uh, two of them, they receive, you know, oil from Iraq. But they sell them to other countries. Oh, right. Third country. Okay. They don't get it into Japan. So uh, your country doesn't produce too much, you know, export, export things, you know, products. So very small. And uh, the products you import from Japan are only limited to cars, Toyota and others. Yes. And also uh, pipes, tubular, you know, pipes for oil facilities. Okay. And other things, very small. So we have to bring the figure up okay. through mutual cooperation. Okay, Mr. Ambassador, uh, Master Barzani, the Prime Minister, announced that they are, because of the climate change, he, he announced that they are working on the clear energy. Mm -hmm. And I think Japan is very experienced in that. Yeah. How do you help Kurdistan in general and KRG? Uh, producing clear energy. Mm -hmm. uh, we are already talking about a certain project uh, between JICA and uh, uh, your Ministry of you know, Electricity yes. regarding like uh, photovoltaic uh, use, uh, for instance, for producing clean energies. So that's one you know, uh, project. And also uh, we should think about more you know, stronger cooperation on you know, uh, uh, you know, green things, you know, for instance, which we are doing a lot, you know, with other Gulf countries. But here in Iraq and Kurdistan, very minimum. And uh, there need to be, you know, new approach, you know, in, in this arena. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, there'd be a little bit delays in thinking, for instance. So uh, we are ready to do whatever, you know, as long as, you know, your, you know, uh, government uh, would come to us. Fantastic. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for this interesting interview. I'm really proud to have this interview with you personally. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. We so much. appreciate it. Zorspas, uh, Farad. Uh, uh, I've been very happy in this interview. Sir I feel Chow. like I can continue. Sir <laughs> Chow. Sir Chow. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank, thank you very you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Hafei Vinishman, Legal Zorbares, Photoshi. Matsu Moto, Balwezi, Japon, La, Ara, Kotai, Hatadi, Dari, Chitter, Shadu, Bakhtawarban, Khotan, Nagam.